Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be um, upgrading this awesome Lenovo X3650 Model 5. This is ongoing. I did a video further back where I put in some hard drives. I put in three 4 terabyte hard drives and I found that my RAID controller inside of the server was not able to do a RAID 5. Not without me going out and spending money on um, on an FOD feature on demand key and I'm cheap so I didn't do that I set it up with ZFS instead making each of the drives go through the RAID controller and being presented to the operating system and then letting well the operating system is Proxmox and then letting Proxmox uh, handle the disks and making this ZFS drive in there probably fine and all and good and um, well it works just like a RAID 5 but I really like my RAID controller in there and it's a, it's a really high-end piece of equipment and just passing everything through and using some software RAID in there well it feels wrong to me you might think something different but well you also put in a a good graphics card in your machines instead of relying on the onboard stuff or even some software stuff and well those RAID controllers they have one job and that is to do that RAID thing and they do that really well yeah there are pros and cons and stuff but I wanted my RAID 5 on my server so I have um, I did spend some money I, I spent Patreon money thank you very much to my patrons for sponsoring this video so I bought a um, yeah by the way sometimes you get a box like this that one right and it will contain something small a, a tiny little card and other times especially if you deal with the Chinese people this came in this came in from the, the United Kingdom so it might be an exception you get a tiny little package like this and it was really well wrapped even though it didn't take up all this space and um, yeah I would like to um, to point out that if we're gonna go just a little bit green <laughs> burning off kilowatts of power in the background <clears throat> I see the irony but um, we can fit like a um, hundred of these in an airplane compared to one of these so um, yeah when you're shipping stuff maybe think about um, how many the airline can fit and that might also keep the prices up but never mind this is a, a tiny little cash controller flash cash cash I think it's actually flash um, controller for the rate controller that are inside of the awesome Lenovo X3650 model 5 together with being a cash flash controller it also opens up the ability of doing RAID 5 so with this in it can do RAID 5 I, I forget if it does other stuff I know that if I want to do RAID 6 I then again have to pay some cash to, uh, to get a feature on demand code I'm not a big fan of that I, um, I really like getting a card where everything is open and upfront price and it's not as if yeah it's just a money machine but this thing they are fairly cheap um, used so this is a used one or leftover or whatever people didn't do with this when they got it it was about 54 dollars from the U or pounds I forget and there is a difference if it's pounds or dollars I know and there were also some shipping so but we are gonna put this in but first I, I wanted to see how fast these three drives in this set of S's so I've been preparing a little bit I have a virtual machine on this server running on those drives and I have kind of installed a RAM drive on that virtual machine as well so I thought well, we should go to the computer and um, do a bit of forth and back and see how that works so okay here we are at the computer and this is the machine that we are messing with this is the Lenovo system x3650 model 5 and this is the machine type there is also the other model the um, uh, it's a slightly older model it's the 50 5462 
This one will handle the version 4 of the Intel CPUs E5-2600 series and the slightly older version will uh, handle the version 3. But I am so lucky to have the newer one and you can find a lot of good information here on Lenovo Press for your equipment. This goes for, well, let's just check Lenovo Press and let's just take the M3. So X3650 M3, go for that. We get all the information that they have on the M3 and we can go and pick all the spare parts or whatever we might need for this one. It also has, we can go and see controllers for internal storage. It has these options. This of course uses the M5000 series and there are different options available for that as well. It's a really good resource for, um, for figuring out your Lenovo servers. But over here, I have the M5. Controllers for internal storage. That's where we wanna go. And here are the different controllers that are available. Mostly it's these, and then there are hardware upgrades, and then there are feature on demand upgrades, and then there are some more feature on demand, and then there is an mm, NVMe something. I guess that's a PCI slot for some NVMe drives. Hmm. Interesting, might go check that out some point. But I have gotten this, um, flash raid 5 upgrade it's kind of in the middle it's a two gigabyte flash raid 5 upgrade it's available in one gigabyte and in four gigabytes as well the one gigabyte is available in cache and flash upgrade but that's the one i got if i then wanted to have my server run raid 6 i would need this feature on demand down here to put on top of that one and if I needed to, um, well, to do some SSD caching enable, then I would need this FOD. Uh, oh, the card that the one I bought, it's this one. It's actually the right place and everything. It has the this through number, and I paid fifty four ninety nine. So I'm a damn liar, ain't I? And I apparently also paid uh, eight point nine pounds in shipping from. Um, from the United Kingdom. Yeah, I pay a lot in shipping. So I can see that I ordered this on the 21st of May. And then I decided it, it comes without a battery. And then later I decided I need a battery for this as well. And I bought the wrong bloody thing. I actually thought that it would be the same as the M5100 series. But on closer inspection, when I was preparing for this video, I found out that this little connector for the for the battery is not the same connector as it was from well the earlier model so today i'm um, it's the first of june today recording this uh, i purchased even one more battery um just um, 20 minutes ago so it, it's gonna be rather expensive before it's 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 gonna end up in a hundred pounds at least before it um, before I'm done with this project. But let's see if we don't all get something out of this. Okay, so here we have Proxmox. And uh, right now I have I have bumped the amount of memory for this uh, virtual machine here. The, it's an editing server that we, uh, we played with more or less in the last video or one of the last videos as well. Um, I bumped it up to 32 gigabytes of memory. I actually found out that I didn't, I haven't put in much memory in this server. Mostly because it only has one CPU, but never mind. 32 gigabytes of memory, we, we gave it that. So, uh, And also, if we look at the drive, uh, hard drive here, we can see that this is on Big Store. Uh, and Big Store is, um, is that one. And it also says that this virtual machine is the only thing that is on there. Summary, uh, it's running ZFS and um, everything else is great and good. So awesome. Here is the virtual machine running on those um, ZFS drives. And I have installed this, it's, what was this called? Never mind, it says it when we started up. LM drive, LM disk, sorry. I have created a 15 gigabyte RAM drive on here. And it has gotten the drive letter V. We are running this on a Windows Server 2019. And um, yeah, that should be good. So let's cancel that and we can go see that. We have that RAM drive here. We have our normal C drive. 
there are 26 gigabytes free. I have copied some data in there and we have that V drive, which is 15 gigabytes. And we're gonna be copying some data over to that one. But first, I, I tested the RAM drive um, and we got these numbers. Read speed of about three gigabytes per second, 3.3 gigabytes. Write speed of about five gigabytes per second. Awesome. And the rest. I also, uh, this is Crystal Disk Mark. I also wanted to try it with HD Tune, but that didn't want to work. I was able to test the, the ZFS drives, which um, came out to, uh, I would say this is about 100 and average. Oh, average is about 125 megabytes per second. Okay, um, I might want to save that. But we have this um, Crystal Disk Mark. And that was of course the RAM drive, so we're gonna change that to be the C drive here. And we're gonna test all of that. That's gonna take a while, so um, we'll snap right back when this is done. Holy crap, that took forever and ever, but now we have it. Um, it, it comes out with some really good numbers here, I must admit. Reading, um, we get 1000 megabytes per second. Not bad. Uh, writing, uh, about 140, not that great. So I'm gonna I'm gonna save this. Okay. Um, another interesting thing to look at is how much is the server doing in the background. So we were testing here, and we get we get it looks like this. So there is some kind of the the greenish thing here is CPU usability, and the blue thing is. IO delay, um, which was up at about 15, 18%. I am not sure if that's good or bad. Um, I did some testing over here and I can see that the IO delay was up as well. Not as much, but almost. The real test is really how quick can we copy data forth and back. So let's try that. So I prepared that. Over here we have the RAM drive and this is the C drive. I have a temp directory that contains about 12.3 gigabytes of data. There are 15 files, so they're, they're fairly big, all of them. We can see it's just, um, I have some, a couple of drivers, the, the LM disk software and Vegas Pro, and then I have some raw footage um, from a video that I did, just so that we have enough data to, to stretch any cache and stuff. Let's try and copy that over and I have my stopwatch here as well. So we're gonna drag that over here, release it and I'm gonna try and press both buttons at once uh, and press copy and it's off. So it seems like we are copying with about a gigabyte per second. Oh, 900 megabytes per second. So, yeah, that is, um, that is not bad. Oh, I forgot to stop. That was probably something that we have to try again. Um, 20 seconds, but it was less. I'll, I'll redo this. Okay, I, I did it again, and we got down to 15.16 seconds. That was pretty quick for 12 gigabytes of data. But it is, of course, a RAM drive, so um, yeah, there's no delay there. So let's um, let's try and copy it back and see what this is. Of course, the read speed from the ZFS drives, and um, if we copy back, we should get the write speeds. Okay, I have deleted the temp folder over here, so we're gonna pull it back, there. and it's gonna come up and tell me to copy if I want to copy. So we're gonna do that and see how that goes. There, copying back. I would expect this to, well, take a little bit longer. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's kind of dropping down now, but it's still really quick. Okay, then it wasn't quick anymore. It, it went to zero for some reason. Is it not fine? There, it's alive, and it's dead, and alive, and... There. 
uh, I don't know what it did there, but it, uh, it took its sweet time. One minute, 10 seconds. How did that look on the server then? That... Okay, we had this big, that was me testing. And over here we had that copying over. So it's it wasn't any big strain on the server really, copying forth and back. Um, like... 7% used of the CPU, about 7-8% doing those copies here in the middle doing nothing. Are you able to see that? We're looking at these numbers over there, the latest numbers that came in. Okay, I found this interesting. Right now I am moving this uh, virtual machine over that we were testing on. It's uh, still on big store but I am transferring that disk over to, um, I guess this one, probably, I'm not sure. Um, one of these two. And up here, we see that we have a lot of IO delay up here. Um, IO delay, mm, quite a lot. I'm, I'll be interested to see if, if that drops when we, uh, when we change to hardware. So out here in the data center, I have, um, well, first I removed the virtual machine from the big store, these three drives over here, and I deleted that drive in Proxmox and I turned off the server. So now we should be able and ready to put in this cache flash controller here, which is, oh, that's not it. That's the wrong one. This is for the Model 4. So where did I put the other one? Oh, it's behind me. Maybe we should see them together. They're pretty much similar, but they changed something, so they're not no longer usable. So this is the one that we are putting in. It has a really long connection there. And this one is for um, the... Um, this was actually sent to me by a subscriber. Thank you very much. Um, I had though already bought one that was bigger. I, I believe this was probably half a gigabyte cache controller. And I had one with one gigabyte cache controller. Um, yeah, so I, I put in the, the bigger one and I have this one laying around for a rainy day. But we're gonna be putting in this one, which is a two gigabyte cache controller. And I don't have a battery for it. Okay, I have disconnected all the power and stuff to the server. Normally, you wouldn't need to put this, take this out because um, there is enough room to to mingle that in there. But well, we are doing some camera work and showing it, so we want to see the ray controller down here, and here's a good view of it. Um, so we're gonna be putting it on here, and um, yeah, it shouldn't be any problem whatsoever. So the ray controller goes into this little dedicated slot on the system board. Uh, that is exactly for this. I am not, I don't, I doubt it that you can put anything else in here than exactly this. So, where did I put it? Here it is. So we're gonna just pop that in there. It has that big beefy connector that we have to try not to damage. There are some plastic guiders to guide it in place has to fit the right holes and stuff. It didn't really want to go in there, but I made it. And you have to press there because I was actually able to get that down in the corners and the connections was not down in the middle. So you have to press where they say to press there. Cool. So we had that installed. Yeah, I will um, pop my um, 10G and graphics card back in here and we will um, and go and see what this did for the system. At a later point, we'll come back and we will put in the battery going out of that connection right there and over... Where is the battery compartment anyway? Yeah, there are room for the batteries here in this plastic thing. You can slide some battery thinky in there somehow. Oh, there are rooms for lots of batteries here. There's one there, and there, and there, and there. Um, don't expect that we will be using that many. So, 
but okay you could maybe put in four controllers in here okay I slided the graphics card and the 10G network connection back in and there would probably have been uh, more than enough space over here to uh, to show me put this in I just needed to put the cable for the powering the graphics card out of the way and we would have been okay but well we got a better view hopefully maybe server is up and running again we are in the bias and we're gonna go and configure the rate controller to set these uh, drives up in rate 5 that's under system settings there we have to go down and find storage bottom one and it has our rate controller which is the server rate m5210 awesome go in there and we're gonna hit the main menu and we need to go and do some virtual drive management there so we have these four virtual drives uh, what I've done here is that I'm passing through each of these four terabyte drives as a rate zero through to the operating system um, so we need to delete those and make those into a rate five I guess we do that by going into it and we have some operations up here and in here we can delete virtual drive okay deleting all virtual drives and I have to confirm there and then we can pick yes are you sure you want to delete oh, the selected yes yes there the operation has been completed okay okay so we're down to three so I'm gonna do the same thing to the two other ones so we're gonna delete virtual drive there we have to go down into the go and then we have to select that one and select yes it did that and press yes and we're down to two so repeat there we have one now so i need to find out where to uh, create them again so i'll dig around and find that okay that didn't take too long to find that it's um it's up here under configuration management if we go in there there are now some new menu points they weren't there before so um, yeah we have a create virtual drive and we have a create create profile based virtual drive and this is like using the wizard we are just gonna be using the, the standard one so let's see what we can pick here we can rate zero nah, we want to go for oh look here what we have here we have a rate five now so apparently it does see our awesome cast drive in there cool rate five on select drives from unconfigured capacity uh, free capacity on configure capacity that's cool uh, select drives okay we have those three drives so we will go and select those there and up, or we could just check all and uncheck all I did it the hard way apply changes the operation was performed successfully thank you um, I don't have the battery in right now but I want to um, to fake it as if it is battery backed up okay so the different settings in here we have some stripe sizes and there is some compatible uh, sizes that it can well it, it will make the virtual drives using these so um, we're gonna keep it at the standard one then there is read ahead which means that if you're reading some data the rate controller will think well he might be asking for the next thing next so I'll just cache that so uh, we wanna we want that should we just check it Oh, there is read ahead and there is no read ahead okay so then there is a write back and this is what makes the cache controller really fast when the host sends some data to the to be stored on the drives the rate controller will put that data in cache and right away tell the host that I have got these data and um, if this is not battery backed up it will not do so it will um, first tell the operating system or the host that the data is safe 
when the data has been written down to disk. But if there is a battery, it will tell it that it has the data right away and it will be ready for the next data. There is a workaround in that. Um, you can write through, that means that, well, the drives always has to take the data. Then there is write back, that means that it will uh, write through if there is no battery and it will um, write back as soon as there is a battery. And then there is always write back and that's kind of the unsafe one. The RAID controller will tell the, the host that I have the data even though it isn't battery backed up. So if it uh, takes the data and it loses power, well that data is, um, is not stored anywhere. But we're gonna go for that one because I am waiting for that battery. So um, we're gonna pick that one. Then we have some IO policy, direct, access, drive. Yeah, I believe the rest of this is okay. So we're gonna go down to save configuration there. And we're gonna make our rate five here. Confirm and yes. And it, um, it tells me that I'm a stupid fuck. Um, and I do agree. You should have that battery, and I need that battery. Um, just haven't come in yet. So, we are done. Let's check. Now we have less options up here, but we can view drives. We have our RAID 0, which is two uh, 300 gigabyte SAS drives. Then we have our RAID 5, which is the three 4 terabyte SATA drives. So in here, in the manage mega rate advanced software options we can see what this opened up for uh, we got mega rate rate 5 unlimited and we have mega rate safe store unlimited I'm not sure what that safe store is maybe it tells us it does not yeah okay and in here controller management we have advanced controller properties and in here we can actually see that the we go in there we can see that there are two gigabytes of memory cache thing available and there are different options here I'm not able to change any of those probably because I don't have access to those those are probably FOD feature on demand keys that I need to install or purchase to be able to use um, SSD caching and stuff like that it would have been neat if I had those but I don't um, it also has this patrol read. This is actually the routine that goes out and reads the drives and makes sure that all the data is okay. It's, um, it's kind of what ButterFS also is doing. It's making sure that, well, the checksums and everything is okay. Um, if it finds something that is not up to speed, if it um, finds some data that doesn't um, add up with the checksum, it will try and correct that. And it has been in here for ages. Uh, somebody has just uh, remarketed that as brand new and smart. But it's, it's an old thing. Let's um, boot the server and see what this did for us. Okay, back at the computer. And we have everything up and running again. Um, the drives are here. And I have managed to create a, a new drive out of them. And they even say over here that they are on this rate controller which is awesome so if we go down or up to this to the data center we can see i have called it big store again that's the one and i have managed to take my virtual machine which is this one and put it first i put it over on what was that that storage no that storage i moved it to this storage and then when the new storage was up and running I moved it back to the big, big store. I just call it that. And that's where it's running from now. So I moved it away from the storage, the, the three drives that I deleted, and I've moved them back onto the three drives when I had created them again. So that is all good. And we have the machine running there. And I've already run some of the tests. Um, I did this test, which uh, definitely did not come up with as good uh, numbers as the other one um, but I think that this is more accurate the test completed way faster than the other one even though the other one had way better numbers I think I can take that up 
here are the tests from the ZFS. So yeah, it, it kind of the sequential uh, reads are only there are about one fourth of what they were on the ZFS. The write are like six, seven times faster. So um, not much to gather out of this. Some of the numbers, this one is about the same. And then the other, the write speed, well, that one is way higher and this is way higher and this is about the same. And yeah, it's, it's kind of confusing. So that test wasn't great. Um, then we have the other test, this test. Um, it shows better numbers than the other test, which I can then also find. See, the old test had, we had about the minimum speed we came down to was about 28.7 megabytes per second, not great. This one was about 70. Uh, probably not a number we can use for anything. Then we have the maximum. Uh, we get about a hundred megabytes per second extra over here. That is indeed a number that is worth mentioning. And the average speed, where this was 125 megabytes per second, we are now seeing close to 200 megabytes per second over here. Funny enough, the access time was faster here than over here. And the boost time was also better over here than it was over here. But the average speed is better. Mm, bit weird. So we uh, kind of need to take the test how fast we can copy over the data. So we should be able to take, um, I still have the C drive here and I have the RAM drive over here. So I should be able to take and copy that temp folder, which had about 12.3 gigabytes of um, data in it. We'll try and copy that forth and back and see how that goes. I have this, I have the stopwatch here. So let's take the temp and be ready to press copy. One, two, three, go. Let's see how that goes. That is actually considerably slower. 200 megabytes per second. This was way faster on the ZFS. One minute, eight seconds. That was, that was way slower. So let's try and delete this folder over here and copy it back. There, we'll try and reset this and be ready to start that. One, two, three, now. So that's some really fast speeds we, uh, we saw and then it dropped. We saw that on the other system as well. But yeah, it died on that. Now it's dead here too. Hmm. And then it came back and it dropped back. Ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen. There. Okay, that um, didn't give the numbers that I was hoping for. There is though this. Um, I have been testing here, doing all these different tests. These are some of the crystal mark and the hard drive testing, and you can kind of see that it has been doing that, and I've been doing uh, it, it. It does different tests. If we if we check that, we can kind of see that it has different stuff that it does. It tests this and then it tests this and this and this and this and this and this. And when you do that, you get that graph. Uh, it looks like it makes these things every time it tests one of those segments. It does something like that. But you can kind of see this IO delay down here. The blue thing here, 
that is really low all the way over here we have a peak we have two peaks we have one here uh, at about 1.8 percent and we have one here at about 3.21 percent which is lower than we had on the ZFS one plus if we see the processor uh, the maximum peak we have is about 7.7 percent usability on the processor so the processor is doing way less than it was doing before of course now that we are copying to a ram drive so the processor is involved in in doing that ram drive thing so the processor is involved with that but normal operations the processor should be way less used than with zfs so it's the next day i was hoping that um, well the server would be done rebuilding the drives um, even though if, doesn't look like it's doing much, but it usually takes some time for um, the RAID controller to, to rebuild that RAID 5 in the background and uh, prepare it. And it's eight terabytes, seven point something terabytes. So it could take some time. Um, I was hoping for better results, but I ain't really getting any younger. So we're gonna leave it here. Um, it looks like that ZFS is doing a really good job. But what it's really just doing is it's stealing half of your RAM and it's just putting it up there and then it will put it down to disk when it um, feels like it, which is probably why I'm getting uh, that high late IO latencies or delays over such an extended period of time. And um, my good buddy Jim was by last night and told me that, well, ZFS will actually um, reserve half of your RAM in your system if you let it. I was more or less just copying from RAM disk to ZFS's RAM and then not getting the correct measurements. Well, I get my RAID 5 on my RAID controller and that was what I wanted. And sometimes a bit later, a battery will be popping in for me so that I can do that right. So that's about it. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.